So we have to buy that guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I went through there already. And that's good. That's good. 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 I realized I hadn't remembered if I turned it on or not. Lonely here to do it. Everything's a little too quiet about kids running around. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to be in Second Corinthians chapter 10. Spirit, Lord. Thank you that you guide us and help us and walk us through through life. Please give us the boldness, Lord, to, to tell others about you. Give us the, the grace to do your work. And please be with, with those that are hurting and suffering. Just heal them, Lord, and be with their families. Thank you. Amen. So, 2 Corinthians 10, 1. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence I am based among you, being but being absent, I am bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present, that with confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For through, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him, he, let him of himself think this again, that he is Christ. Even so, we are Christ's. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord has given us for the edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letter. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such and one think this, that such as are in word by letter, when we are absent, such will, will we be as indeed when we are present. For we dare not ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not, we stretch out so we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. 
For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's line of things, made ready to our hands, but he that, glor that glorifies, let him glory in the Lord, for not he that commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends. So he's right in kind of kind of defending his his ministry and defending that they don't that they don't walk in the flesh, but they but they walk uh, according to the spirit, and that you don't do things according to the flesh, but things are according to the spirit. That that uh, that things are on a that we sometimes think of things in a you know fleshly type manner. We see the things that we do. And uh, uh, we see the things that we do, and of course we do them in the flesh, we do them outside, but there's always a spiritual aspect to everything. And, uh, and so we have uh, those, but those things can sometimes be very hard to deal with. Some of the, some of the thoughts and, uh, and imaginations and stuff in our lives can be some of the worst things for us to have to deal with in our lives, uh, Satan's always looking for those strongholds to try to try to try to get himself into, and and he knows you very well. He knows us. We all have a time before Christ, and so he knows where we're weak. He knows those places where he can kind of kind of dig himself in, and that it's hard to drive everything out. Our our flesh can be is is very weak. It is just the way it is. And so uh, we'll go to uh, Galatians 2. Galatians 2.15. are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, know that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have baptized in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if we build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For though the law, for, for through the law I am, uh, am dead, through the law I am dead, to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in, in vain. So, in our lives, we are justified by faith. The law was brought to show us, to show us and the rest of the world and the Jews who was originally given, given to that no matter how hard they try, you can't, you can't do it. You can't live by the law. Uh, every person, uh, every person in the Old Testament was shown that, hey, they can't live by, by the law. God was uh, very careful to show all of the transgressions that that people had 
just to show that, that there is no way you can, you can live by the law and be justified by the law. It's only by faith, by faith that we can really be justified. Because no matter how hard we try, we're always going to transgress the law someplace. And, and God cares about what we think as much as he does about what we do. So, but that's why Christ came. So, 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter four one. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For in the time past of our lives may suffice to us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walk in the lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, reveling, banqueting, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them, to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to man in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and Watch unto prayer, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one without uh, one to another without breaking. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. For if any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God gives, that God in all things might be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, Peter emphasizing that uh, we live we live here in the flesh. We live our lives in the flesh. But we don't live our lives for the flesh anymore. We don't live, uh, Christ suffered in the flesh. He came, suffered, and died in the flesh. He was really here. It wasn't some sort of just spiritual thing. He was really here. He suffered and died to give us life. And he gave his life so that we will not have to live our lives for the flesh anymore. We've had those times in our lives, some were saved very young, so... You know, they're, they're a little harder to remember when you were saved at four or five years old. But um, we've all had those times when we when we lived to the flesh. We had those times in which we, we did the things uh, that the world does. We've had, we've had those times, but we don't live to those things anymore. And sometimes the world is, is confused because they, they see it and it's like, why, you know, why do you make such a big deal out of it? And, you know, why don't, and especially, uh, the world has always made a big deal out of all the same stuff we suffer with today, but it's like a renewed sort of uh, version of it. Because uh, the, the United States and the world kind of, they kind of based everything sort of on what the Bible said, although they didn't believe every aspect of it. And then we're kind of, because they didn't all live that way, things didn't work that way. Now we're seeing the result of the lack of life, uh, the lack of living for Christ, and the world's going back because the world isn't for Christ. The world doesn't really live for Christ. We're the ones who live for Christ. Christians are the ones that live for Christ. And so you have the, the lust, the, the drunkenness, the stuff like that. And some will say, well, they're just having fun. 
I don't care what fun they might be having, it's 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 sin. It is sin and it should be something that Christians should be part of. Uh, but some of those things can be really hard. And it's and in Second Corinthians it's talking about, you know, tearing down those things, those imaginations and the and the stuff like that. And that can be stuff that can be that uh, can be really hard to do. Uh, we'll go to Romans chapter eight. Romans eight verse twelve. Okay, Romans 8, 12. Therefore, brethren, we have debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, but if you through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of your body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, where we cry, Abba, Father. Spirit itself, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also, we may be also glorified together. So... Again, we don't live after the flesh anymore. We're not debtors to the flesh, but to life. Christ has made us alive with him. And we, and if we're alive with Christ, we are led by the Spirit. We are led by God, and uh, we bear witness. And the Spirit bears witness of Christ. He bears witness of God and always points to Christ. We want to lead people to Christ, and we want to be good witnesses for God and our enemies. In our lives, um, we'll go to First Timothy chapter one. First Timothy one twelve. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me that for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith love, and, and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all expectation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, and that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe unto him to ever, to life everlasting. And now and and uh, now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever. Amen. So we have uh, Paul coming uh, and talking about uh, himself that he was the that he was saw himself as the chief of sinners before before he came to Christ. But it, Christ came to save sinners. He came to save people who sin. Came to save them from their sin. Uh, not only forgive them, but also save them so that they don't have to live in their sin anymore. So we don't have to live that way 
and live unto ourselves in the flesh. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy two one. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the thing that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Uh, thou therefore endure hard, uh, hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that, uh, that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. If a man also strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned, except he strives lawfully? The husbandman that labors must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord gives uh, the understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. So we are soldiers for God. We are called we are called by God, and we don't war after the things of the flesh. We don't war uh, after the things of this of this world, we don't war like others would war with, you know, guns and clubs and that kind of stuff. But we war in the spirit. We have we have our our weapons. We have are not the same, and uh, and so we we know we know who Christ is. We know that he he fulfilled everything of. Of the, he fulfilled everything in the New Testament. He fulfilled everything that he he was supposed to. He is definitely the Son of God, and he came to he came to save us from our sins, give us new life, and give us the ability to, to walk for him. So he came for our sakes. Uh, Hebrews twelve. Hebrew chapter twelve. Uh, verse 1. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so, so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he's calling for us to set down all the weights of life, the sin that we have, to set that down. can't truly run for God if we are also living in sin in, in our lives. If we're doing things that God doesn't want us to do, it's really hard to run a race if you've got a backpack on your back full of bricks. It just it doesn't work as well as the person running the race that has no backpack. 
and it just uh, it just makes it a lot harder. And so he wants us to to run the race. That Christ endured uh, suffering. He endured the cross, despised the shame, and he he conquered. He was the conquering hero. He saved. The, he gave the world a way to get right with God. Now, Romans 13. Romans 13, verse 8. In Romans 13, verse 8, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loves another has fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And then knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, and not in rioting, in drunkenness, not in chambering or wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Sometimes uh, we forget, especially uh, apologetics are very necessary, and apologetics is just the defense of of the faith, defense of what God has said. Sometimes we forget that love is a great defense. I mean, after all, how will the world know we are Christians? But by the love we have for one another. We have to have love in our lives. We have to love God. We have to love our fellow brothers and sisters. We have to love the world enough to tell them that they're sinners. That they're sinners just like us. The difference is we are, we, we no longer live by our flesh, but we live by faith. We look towards God and we realize that although we will sin, we are we are as as soldiers, we we don't live that way anymore. We don't do it as a habit. We don't do it because it's who we are, but we war after the flesh. We are, we're we're striving to look more like Christ all the time. We're not striving to look like the world. But we love the world enough in order to give them Christ, so that they no longer have to live for themselves, but they can live for God. Now, Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6.10 finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the fearless shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. And for me, the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And so, he's calling us to put on the armor of God, that we are to realize we live not by our own might, but by God's might. Uh, it's not our armor, but it's God's armor that we put on. We are, we're, to, we're to put on Christ. We're not going to be able to fight this battle of ourselves. If we think we're going to go out and try to be better people by trying to will ourselves to be better people, we're not going to be able to do it. But we have to put on the armor of God and then turn to Him, turn to God. He's the one that fights for it. He's the one that, that can finally defeat those things in our lives. We can have victory, but only through Him. And then at the end, we see that even Paul needed prayer. He was asking them to pray that he would be able to, to give the gospel, that he would be able to utter the, the gospel, the mysteries of the gospel, and that he would be a bold ambassador for Christ. He too needed prayer. He needed God. He needed, uh, he needed God to do what he was supposed to do because he had failings like all the rest of us. He was a real person who had a real life. He was, he, he lived, uh, the, he showed the kind of life that we should live in Christ, but he himself did not live that life because he was willing himself to do this, but he looked to God to guide him in all of that. First uh, Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians 5, 1. I think we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's get that on. 1 Corinthians 9, 23. First Corinthians 9, 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know you not that they which run in a race run uh, one all, but one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain, and every man that strives for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beats the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So, he's a... Uh, and uh, so he's calling us to run, to run a race, to run as though we are to obtain a prize, and to run hard, to not be something in life, we take life seriously, we take God seriously. We only have so much time on this earth. We only have so much time to tell people about Christ. We only, we only have so much time to actually live for God. So we're to run, run the race. They don't waste time during a race. You know, running around and, you know, doing extra stretches in the middle of the race. And they don't, you know, go off and go play games and stuff. But they, they run the race 
to to win a prize. They 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 run it with purpose. They're serious. And so he calls us to strive after mastery. It's something he wants us to fight with. Something he wants us to 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 do battle with. It's something we will do battle with. Our our own flesh is quite is quite a good enemy all of itself. We don't need Satan's help in order to cause trouble in our lives. Um, and so he's saying that he keeps his own body under and brings it under some subjection. And why does he do it? Because he doesn't want to be found in castaway. The word castaway is dogmas to be to to, to be to be found. Um, just to see. Um, by implication, to be found worthless or rejected or a reprobate. That's what the word means. He he doesn't want to be found to be to be worthless. He doesn't he doesn't want to be um, to yeah. He doesn't want to be found that. He wants to be found somebody who has lived a worthy life, who has lived for God, and uh, he he doesn't want. To, to live the kind of life that he's lived it in vain. Because after all, if we don't live our lives for Christ, we're kind of wasting our time as Christians. But if we live for Christ, then it's a worthy life. I mean, after all, this life is short. And hereafter, we have all eternity with God. We have all eternity in which we won't have to strive after sin. We won't have to strive sin, with sin anymore. It won't be around anymore. We won't be we won't be looking at I mean, let's face it, we all grow old. And the only difference, the only the only way you don't grow old is if you die. So that's it. So we're all going to grow old. And at least and, but in the heavens after we're not going to anymore. It's just that's not going to be around. We're not gonna have darkness, we're not gonna have fear, we're not gonna have anger, we're not gonna have those things anymore. It's not gonna be around. But here on this earth we've got things that we have to fight with. Uh, Hebrews 12. Now we're going to read verse 3. Hebrews 12, 3. For consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your minds. You have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastens not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are a bastard and not a son. Furthermore, we have we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastise us after their own uh, pleasures, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastising for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hand which hung down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Without no man shall see the Lord. 
looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as uh, Isaiah, who, or Esau, who was for one morsel of meat, sold his birthright. For you know that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So, uh, God's warning us is saying us not to be weary. God's going to deal with us. We're going to do, when we do wrong things, and it's not, we don't have to do wrong things. We are going to because we're human. That's just the way it is. But God wants us to live life after him. When we do wrong things, we are going to receive the, the, the just payment thereof. We are going, well, he's not going to send us to hell for it because we're his children. If he doesn't deal with us, though, then we're certainly not his children. He doesn't chastise those people of the world because they're not his. But we are his, and he shows the and he shows a kind of a, a picture that hey, we all have parents. We have parents that when we did wrong, they made sure we understood it was wrong and, and tried to curb that to make us do right. Uh, everybody had their own way of doing it, but um, but God's going to deal with us too because He is a good Father. He is a good father, and he's not going to let us live that way. He's going to deal with it, because he knows what's right. And so, with, with that, God's going to deal with it. And so we need, to be, we need to be trying to live our lives after God, and live. But God's going to help us along the way. He's going to help us to deal with it. He's going to teach us. He's going to put things in our lives that will build us up and make us stronger. If we just take the situations that come and realize they're there for a purpose, they're there for a reason. Hard times come because they build strength in our lives. They make us stronger with God. When we mess up and we do things that are wrong, God, if there's a trial that comes, if we pass it, great, where we learn a lesson. If we fail, then we learn a lesson. We learn something both ways. Um, we just we need to look to God because He is the great teacher. He is the one that can teach us and help us and show us and turn to Him in prayer. I mean, there are those that have really suffered with different things and they've spent a good deal of time praying and fasting that God would help them through these things so that they would be able to deal with them. Um, we aren't going to be able to do it in our own flesh, though. You know, we look. We're supposed to have self-control. But our self-control isn't found in us, but in God. There's just, we can't do it ourselves. We need to turn to God. So, we will pray. Lord, thank you for this time and this time to remember, Lord. Thank you that we can turn to you and look to you. Please help us, Lord, to and guide us through life. Give us strength when we are weak. Give us more grace to live for you. We cannot do it without you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. We relate to stars, they plant. And worth every.